two games at halftime, two in progress as we continue to travel the road to the final four. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Welcome once again, everyone. Singular at the half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. And at the break, Oklahoma's lead over Illinois. Chicago is 8 at 38-30. What about this game, Clark? A big reason they do have the eight-point lead is the work that Aaron McGee has done on the glass. That's where they have an advantage. Team speed and on the backboard. You see McGee with almost a double-double already. Jordan Cardos, one of the best three-point shooters in the nation. He has a chance in the second half. If he gets going, then Illinois, Chicago could stay close. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., North Carolina State posts its lowest scoring first half of the season with just 18. Then they come out and hit their first five shots of the second half, go on an 11-2 run, and they're back in at 32-20 line. Let's take you out to the MCI Center. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. It'll be North Carolina State ball out right of the break. They have just gone on a... 11 to 2 run to begin the second half. They were down 12 at the intermission. Now it's only three here in Washington. Well, the Wolfpack has clawed its way back into this game early in the second half. The Spartans lead is now down to 32 to 29. Meanwhile, first round action in the South bracket in Pittsburgh, Central Connecticut State and the Pitt Panthers 37 25 Pitt. Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery are there. Julius Page, an 84% free throw shooter, misses the first of two, and he'll shoot one more. Julius Page missed them both, 84% of the line. And John Popovsky makes his first appearance now, a young man from Canada, number 23 for Central Connecticut State. An 8 nothing run for Pittsburgh to open the second half. And Popovsky can make some threes, he can put it on the floor as well, take it to the 10. Steps. What a shame, huh? Yeah. Pretty good, solid move. But unfortunately, they're not going to call steps. Oh, they weren't. They're going to call the foul. Yes. Right? Pittman. Uh, Brad's going to be on the floor, not shooting. And it was called on Zavatskis instead of Brown. That's his second. Non shooting foul, so Damian Battles will inbound. Central Connecticut State has won 19 in a row. They have not been defeated. In the year 2002, but they've got their hands full now against the third seeded Pitt Panthers. There's Edwards with a strong move. It, interesting, interestingly enough, down the low post. So the Blue Devils cut that deficit to 10, coming up on seven minutes of play in the second half. Coming up in our second round of games here this afternoon on CBS, you will see the number two seed in the East, UConn, take on Hampton. You'll also see the fourth seed in the Midwest, Illinois, up against San Diego State. We thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. Coming up next, the second half of your game between Creighton and Florida will send you back, or rather, Illinois, Chicago, and Oklahoma will send you back in just a moment. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Support self-expression nationwide. Review in terms of knowing his background as a player at University of California, didn't he, Jim? Well, Dave's a, a college basketball fan. He was deep. And as I mentioned about Cheryl before, here's a young man that from a playing time in terms of minutes doesn't get a lot. But this year, as an example, 20 against Virginia, 16 Florida State, 18 Clemson. So he can be a very explosive scorer. There's a McDonald's All-American coming into NC State with great promise. North Carolina State has its first lead since 6-5. As I said, uh, coming back in the second half, Jim, that 30 to 18 is a scary kind of lead to have at any point in the game. You almost feel like you're in total control, but because of the amount of points scored, knowing that teams are going to explode in the second half, it's kind of fool's gold. Torbert back on the floor for Michigan State, being pressed here. Melvin really doing a good job getting out there and moving those feet for a big guy defensively. 21 to 7, second half advantage by State. North Carolina State, that is. Rakis in there keeping the ball alive. 
Great Taylor hustle. saves it over to Anaganya. Great hustle. Taylor, jumper. Thought he got foul on the shot. And Melvin pulls it away. North Carolina State possession, up two. Hodge is really getting a lot of energy here. You get him to score a couple of points. Young man can handle the ball, plays just about any position. Posts up well, down and low, can play a little bit of point as well. Wolfpack after just that very, very sorry first half shooting. How about that play? Oh, couldn't quite get it to close. Seven out of nine now in the second half from the field. The second half, turning it around, the Wolfpack. I think Marcus Taylor is not taking advantage of his dribble penetration enough in this game, particularly the way the game is being called. He used the referee as a teammate in this game. Is that some screens? No, I mean, to, you, no, I mean <laughs> I that, that they are going to call it, so you might as well take advantage of it. Good outlet pass. Hodges tough on a break. Bounces it in. Crawford clobbered to the line. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Andreas called for that one. You saw that note earlier that the Wolfpack won in seven against tournament teams, but they did during the course of the year have four wins over top 10 teams when they played them. Up at Syracuse. Virginia. Virginia twice. Right. Both times when they beat Virginia uh, in the regular season. Virginia was ranked in the top 10. And, the, and then Maryland in the ACC tournament. First time since 83 they had four wins over top 10 teams. When you think about Virginia, they were at one point, Virginia, Illinois, and Iowa there were three teams this year that were ranked Illinois at one point second in the country. And then you had Virginia that got as high as a four. It's hard to believe. Neither Iowa or Virginia in the NCAA tournament. Torpet, good short on that And the hold. Powell with good defense on the jump shot and then reaching. Melvin is down on the floor. He has been very tired here. Called on a lot of minutes. Kind of got hit in the neck, and he ought, to, he ought to see the shot of what happened to Ballinger in the first half if he felt that next shot was uh, a tough one. That foul called on Cheryl. Michigan State now has missed its last seven from the field. Zone defense by NC State. Paul ha Hodge and Melvin, all good guys with quickness down on that baseline. Anaconda's got position, Jim, but they just don't let him get the touchdown inside. If they get it in, something good will happen. I am on the shot clock. He'll fade away. Oh, he is boy. a pure shooter. He is some kind of player. Always under control. Never shows any emotion, except before the games where he has problems every once in a while, having to go ahead and, uh, and, and throw up. Had that happen to him in the Seton Hall game and, and, and has done it subsequent games nice Powell goal. and one young man as I said started the season as a double figure scorer consistently has really been quiet of late but that shows you the kind of talent he has offensively two entirely different teams that we're seeing wearing this red and white in this game good drive much like uh, Hills shot a fadeaway one-hander the third on Ballinger, seventh team foul. One shot for the freshman Powell from Riverdale, Georgia. 70% free throw shooter. And this Wolfpack team that has not been in an NCAA tournament game since 1991 has turned it around this half. Outscoring the Spartans in this half, 25 to nine. Jabari has not been much in evidence in this game at all. He is their center, their leading shot blocker. And right here, a hustle play. The fans unhappy with the call. Both guys after it. Bob is that raw talent we talk about. I mean, you can't, you, you know what, hustle's one thing. But you have to pick your moments. Absolutely. And Brown with three fouls, not a wise thing to do. Only played eight minutes in the first half. Well, a nice wraparound. Bailey oh, got it inside of the big fella, Kickert. He's on the board. 
Well, the sign, a sign, Craig, of good defense is that in the first half, these teams were two for 21 from three-point range, uh -huh. but they were 26 for 30 from the foul line, so they're capable shooters, but not when they defended well. Boy, McGee, terrific head fake and a drive. 16 points, Bailey again kicks Little. Corey Little, he'll stand at a particular spot, and he's found one on one wing, went to the opposite side, back-to-back -back threes for Corey Little. And Jimmy Collins wants to find him on a lot of spots right here. He's been their offense second half. That was the first uncontested shot I think they've had all day. McGee double team. Shara is out of rhythm. Yeah. Bailey's had three assists. The threes keep going up. That one did not go down for Cardos. When you think mathematically about three-point shots, 50% of two-pointers, you usually win your games, and 50% of two-pointers is 34% of threes. Oh, a sweet stroke. Hollis Price with 13. Only two of five in that first half. Price loves to play off the ball. That's why he recruited Quantus White to be his point guard. Teammates in high school. Price had 23 against Kansas in that Big 12 title game at Kemper. What a win for the Sooners in that one. Bailey floats it. Had a good look. Ball was in and out. Quickly up court comes Price. Around the screen from Sylvie, working on a little float shot, tough. Cardo's had it and lost it out of bounds. Cardo's thinks it was off Oklahoma. Price, the ability to stop and go quickly. That makes him a difficult guy to guard. Solverson checks back in for Illinois Chicago, playing with three fouls. With the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to the school's general scholarship fund, a tradition now for 30 years. One time after a game, a player knew he was the Chevrolet player of the game. He wanted to know if he got the money. <laughs> a raw with his first bucket this half, eight points, and the lead is back to 10 for Oklahoma. Bailey drives. The 1-3-1 zone, switch up. Leaves threes in the corner. Banks is open. Dribbles and drives. The lefty gets the bounce and out. Loose ball on the deck. Hollis Price. Raw. Rounded out. You know, the question if I was Kelvin Sampson, I'd be asking myself right now is why do I keep Ara in? Now, he's a mainstay of their team, but he has been cold. Selby picked up the foul, his third, and Oklahoma leads by 10. Trey, now look at He took a 33-footer a while ago that Dana Altman was not happy with. He'll take that. He has 13. So that's, he's the kind of guy, Eddie, that's going to get his points even on a poor day. He's too good a shooter and getting too many good looks in transition. Florida has got to find him in transition where he can bang those home all night long. Bonner goes finger roll, does not fall. Dabbert clears it. Brett Nelson, I beg your pardon, taking it to the rack. A couple of finger rolls by Brett have not fallen. He's missed a couple of layups today. Dana Altman wants more movement and spacing, and he sees neither. So the suffocating zone that Florida's deployed. Shot clock at three, a stress test for Taylor, and he still knocks it down. Well, you can't defend any better than that. That's as good as it gets defensively. You just got to congratulate the offensive team when they can make a play like that. Lead down to one. Both teams very streaky from an offensive standpoint. In many respects, they're mirror images of one another. And now this crowd at the United Center get behind, getting behind the lower seated team. Tough shot by Lee. Now numbers for Carroll. And the bump for Morian Green. 
That's the second foul on Orion Green. Again, great defense here. Mara plays excellent defense for 32 seconds, but Taylor jumps up over Orion Green, makes a very, very tough shot. And here's Carver coming out, wide open shot. That's way too easy for Carver. Florida's got to get into him more defensively and pressure his shots. I tell you, his feel for the game, Eddie, I really love. Shot clock winding down, he recognizes, hey, I'm gonna step out and force them to guard me from deep. Well, Taylor's the one player Creighton has, Tim, that can beat you off the bounce. He can jump up over you on the offensive end of the court and make plays. Yeah, he is a big-time conference talent. Mid-majors many times now have big-time talent. Hamilton, that's a shot that he needs to take more of. First three-pointer of the day for him. He has six. Well, it was a pick and roll, but they slid behind the pick, and Hamilton pulled back and knocked it down. Porter jump stop. Well defended by Florida, out of bounds off the Gators. 11.55 remaining. Billy Donovan wants an explanation, but he's happy with his defense. And it to Moff, that was for a 10-point lead. If you're Marcus Taylor, you have got to take this game over by putting the ball on the floor and getting moving. Hill has his pocket pick. And wow. it's burst to the basket for the 50-40 advantage. Timeout, Michigan State. Got to slow this game down here. So the Wolfpack continues to outplay Michigan State in the second half, coming up on eight and a half minutes to play. In Pittsburgh, Central Connecticut State trails the Panthers by six as they come up on eight and a half to play. Let's send you there for a long trip and go after. Pitt on the run. And a battle for the ball. A foul is called on Brandon Knight. Should have been given up earlier. Couldn't get a good look. Page uh, making the decision through it behind them. But the ability to turn the corner and find people. The gather, the finish, and it's all battles. Whatever has been necessary. Here the switch. He can get by Zavakis and then finds as the defense. Uh, Troutman steps up. Good soft hands, and he has just been creative. Pittsburgh seemingly coasting with a 12-point lead. All of a sudden, the three-point range shooting of Popovsky and the inside scoring of Edwards got Central Connecticut State back within three. Now they miss another. It was a 10-1 Central Connecticut State run. That's going to be goaltending. Got to stop the dribble. Brown got in too deep. And that Edwards fall, pretty good effort. Oh. And how he's saying, calm down. I think he'll need a new shirt after this game. <laughs> He's gone through that one. 48-40. It was 43-40. Here's another takeaway by Pitt. And look at the open look from the corner. Page got it. Knight spots Page. Well, that's another story. Vern, this is just solid basketball. The ability to get down early, knock down shots. Page with some nylon. McGee, the lefty. Oh, man. Boy, ripping the net. Demonstrating inside and outside why he is a Big 12 performer, all league. And the lead is 12 for Oklahoma. McGee putting on a clinic with 18. White picks up the loose ball. Well, this is a time of the game, Bob Wenzel, that uh, Illinois Chicago has got to take care of the ball. Each possession so important. I think a little fatigue sets in at the 10-minute mark usually, and we are almost there. Four fouls. McGee holding on the lob. I'm sorry, McGee demonstrates inside outside right here. He sets a screen and pops. This is a screen and pop. Somebody comes and challenges him. He's got very good range just inside the three point line. He demonstrates inside ability. He's a very good all around player. Four on Thor. McGee, a 44% shooter from the floor, and he's going to have to take a, a seat as Thor Solverson with the four fouls, eight points. Dietrich takes the inbounds with 12 minutes left in this game. This is where Oklahoma is an interesting team. When they substitute, they come with Dietrich right here for McGee, and Dietrich a very solid offensive performer as well. 
They're not overly big. They don't have to be against the Flames because the Flames are small. Cedric Banks picks up the foul. And that will be his second. And a timeout in Dallas, Oklahoma. Up by 12. Immediate timeout, 7.30 to go. You normally are, you have help behind you. But here, as I said, everybody up above the foul line, so consequently, if you do beat your man, there's nothing back there to help. And look at how Eftemoff had a clear sailing once he beat him on the pump fake. He left him off by <laughs> the free throw line. Very nice. That is quite a turnaround in a game where NC State showed no offensive firepower in the first half. No life in the first half, but just breaking out here in the second. Creighton now going inside and outside. His Brody Darren just schooling David Lee, a freshman who needs to get in the weight room one on one at the low post. Now, outside, we see the pass over to uh, Taylor for the three. Florida may need to stop pressing. They're giving up easy shots in transition. What a difference a half makes in Terrell Taylor's game. Four of four in the second half for Taylor after going 0 6 in the first half from the field. Yeah, it's amazing. He's got a total of 11 off the bench. The sixth man of the year of the Missouri Valley Conference beginning to look like that here in the second half. 56 54. Udonis Haslam is going to check in on the next dead ball, Eddie. Does that surprise you? Not at this juncture in the game. Ten minutes to play. We got uh, survive, survivor you go here. A two-point game with clubs that mirror images of one another. White misses his first try of the afternoon. He was three for three from downtown in the opening half. But it's a two-point lead, 56-54. Gators, and now White picks up a foul against Ismail Carroll. The Blue Jays on a bit of a run to open the second half. They trail by seven. That's the third foul on White. And Coach Donovan has seen enough. Haslam and Bonner back into the game. Dana Altman's team uh, very much into the fray, and Donovan having to deal with foul trouble. Knocks down a tray to give the Blue Jays their first lead of the half. He has 16, 57, 50. sized up with Kansas the top seed along with uh, Stanford who moved on yesterday in their win against uh, Western Kentucky same half of that bracket when they moved to the Sweet 16 but Eddie Fogler what we've seen are two teams that love to press an open floor game but coaches that get caught from time to time with matchup problems in the low post definitely here tonight of course has them now back on the court creates the angle to get to the foul line at the low post be interesting to see what Creighton does to stop him in low and the Creighton now Tim has that confidence of twinkle in their eye yeah. they are playing with much more confidence here and this game's going down the wire and typical of uh, sites like these Creighton of course uh, Omaha closer to Chicago than Gainesville Florida but I think more because they're the lower seed Illini fans that are beginning to fill the building uh, siding with the Blue Jays now here's where the underdog has the home court advantage I don't care where it's located or what the seeds are 13 turnovers now committed by the Blue Jays that's been of the afternoon Hamilton dogged by Taylor a normal starting five for Florida generally on the floor Bonel Cullis got the start today they wanted to match up with a taller team against uh, Brody Darren and Kyle Corver. Foul off the ball will go against the Gators. Brett Nelson with his first. Well, Brett Nelson, of course, involved in the fracas earlier in the week with Ladarius Halton, left his uh, cheek fractured that required surgery back on Tuesday. He struggled with his shot today, but uh, showing no ill effects from the problem. I mean, the swelling is down from yesterday's practice. 
Gators turned the ball over just once in 17 minutes. That's been one of the real pluses for their team through the course of today's game. Bowden, too strong. Grimes keeping it alive. Ismail Carroll running the show now. Gets it to DeAnthony Bowden. Wide open, Taylor. An air ball, and Haslam controls. Nelson has the ability to cross over. Great pass inside to Haslam. And he took the foul inside. And those big mitts just gobble that pass up. Breaking foul, number 25, Kyle Third personal. Watch Brent Nelson cross the court, he gobbles it up. Great hands by Haslam and powers the ball up, gets to the foul line. You've said this many times, Eddie, he is an angle low post player. Okay, explain that, how he creates angles for himself. Haslam. He has the huge body and quick feet. He's not overly athletic. He doesn't jump over you with great spring. He's a body strength quickness player. And once he gets you on your hip, it is over. He scores or gets to the foul line. The one concern for Haslam, not only today, but if Florida survives the rest of the tournament, early foul trouble. Two straight games, he's gotten into it. Nelson is fouled by Carroll. That's a three-shot violation. The Cardinals sit in basketball defensively, fouling the three-point shot. Florida offensive rebounds, a missed free throw, and gets to the line for three. For Florida, number 10, Brent Nelson. He can't believe it. You see he's got that whodunit look. Ticky tack three-point on the wrist, perhaps. Very close. Play on here, NCAA tournament game, Tim. We have had, though, a couple of them. I mean, they've called it very tightly today, inside as well as out. Players have got to make that adjustment, and Carroll, known, by the way, as a defensive player that will take chances, sometimes that uh, you'll get a foul on image only. And Carroll's playing a lot more than Tyler McKinney here in the second half. He's much quicker with the ball and has done a bit, much better job breaking Florida's press, but Florida now has pulled off the press against Creighton. Tyler McKinney, the freshman from Urbandale, Iowa, inserted as a starter mid-season has led this team to a 16-3 record for Creighton since taking over. Oh, Carroll doing a little Marcus Haynes act in the corner, trying to find Dabbert out of bounds. This is a team made up of a number of players from the state of Iowa. Of course, uh, Council Bluffs is very close by, as is Pella, where Corver's from. Brody Darren, McKinney, Lindemann, as well as the star of the team. Corver, all players from Iowa. And I think that that opened the floodgates when Corver came, as talented as he is. Creighton will have fertile territory in the farmland of Iowa for some time to come. And Iowa basketball is much more noted for good players and many more players than Nebraska high school basketball. Foul spotted inside as Dabbert trying to body up against Haslam gets the personal. That's his second. 7.50 left and a three point lead for the Gators. Melvin steps out. See, here's where Taylor picks up his dribble. He needs to keep it alive and penetrate into the lane. Taylor, three-point shot. Anaconda was not boxed, and he took advantage of it. Eftimov did not have him boxed out. The guy that's getting tired right now is Melvin, but look at what he's saying. Get out of the way. I've got the matchup to bring the ball up the floor, and he is right about this. Can you believe that basket? First two points of the game for Anaganya. Well, in the first half, he had only touched the ball once. So five minutes remaining, and Bobrakis with the body. And again, go to the line. Here we'll see as he goes inside. Rebound. You're playing against a man as strong as Anaganya. You better get the body on him early. Two points today. And a tough defensive assignment having to go outside. Ooh, Miller bounces out. One more for him. Torbett back in for Tom Izzo side. Miller, an 87% free throw shooter. Everybody remembers his brother, Sean, the assist leader still at Pitt. Was an assistant coach at NC State. Now an assistant coach at Xavier. Team still alive. But Excellent free throw shooting, part of the family tradition. That was a kick by Melvin. Still Michigan State ball. And what Anderson's looking for is to see if I can go long again, but here's the difference. 
Eftemoff is already back at the, oh, and he no longer uh, can move. Can't run that baseline because the ball had been kicked right freshman, after a made basket. A freshman mistake. Once the ball had been put in bounds and then back out, you no longer have the right to run the, the baseline. Tom Izzo has his head down saying, what else could go wrong for my ball club here in the second half? State using clock and an offensive structure they really like. A team that is 20 and 0 this year when leading with five minutes remaining. That's the case here. In fact, holding a rather substantial 10-point lead the way this one's going. And again, here's that tough matchup. Melvin is such a good ball handler outside, as is Hodge. Miller, Eftemoff, good with the ball as well. Crawford three, short. Not a good sequence there. Taylor, foot on the line, that's a two, not a three. Jim, still a lot of time if you're Michigan State in this ball game. If uh, NC State starts trying to put it in the freeze here and takes away their momentum that they had offensively, Michigan State can get right back in this game. Grundy's going to be coming in on the next whistle, and here it is. No shot. Foul called. That's the fourth on Anderson, and Grundy about to reenter. Monday, uh, Wednesday night on a new Survivor. Don't miss the first 10 minutes when the Castaways' lives could be turned upside down. And then stay tuned for an incredible adventure on The Amazing Race. It all begins at 8, 7 Central Wednesday here on CBS. Grundy's not coming in. Gonna replace the shooter. Well, I think he's going to come in for Melvin because Melvin has got to be worn down a little bit. He's been playing hard on both ends of the floor. No, he isn't. He's coming in for Crawford. Coming in for Crawford now. And Melvin has had to be the primary ball handler against the press and do the work defensively. Has had a great second half. Young man uh, at six foot eight, 65 assists, only 52 turnovers on the year, with a lot of ball handling responsibility. Huge hands, but soft touch. Melvin's two at the line, puts it back to 10. 59-49 Wolfpack. By the way, Martell Bailey, or pardon me, uh, Banks, is, is one Christ? of 11 from the floor today. Yep. And he is their top scorer, so that is indicative of Oklahoma's D. Make that one of 12. Has not scored this half. Okay. And another timeout, 7-11 to go. And Oklahoma up by 12. Some years. Now Troutman. And Knight and a foul is called on John Alexander. Yeah, trying to get between defenders. Uh, yesterday we had a chance to see Jason Matthews and Curtis Aiken, two of the former greats, and uh, they all showed up, Charles Smith included, at the last game at Fitzgerald. So You know who wasn't there? Uh, let, let me try this. Go ahead. Send it in, Jerome. Oh, Jerome Lane, he's coaching high school. He was busy. <laughs> oh, God bless Jerome. Yeah. Take it to the rim. They said Jerome Lane is coaching in Akron. Yeah, I believe so. And he's gained a couple of pounds. His Darryl. teammates told us that. And Darrell Porter was there also. Right. He yeah. coached at Duquesne here for a number of years. Now those pit teams in the late 80s were very, very good. The best team probably. You have to go back to 74 with Billy Knight. Yep. Way back. And of course, I hate to say this to you, an offensive play here, I believe it was Robinson with the pick. And Knight Don very slow getting up. The first guy I can remember as Knight fortunately recovers, Don Hennon, former great at Pitt, a dentist later in his lifetime. But here's the screen baseline. They get him for moving and just that little hip. And Brandon, like any good player, you've got to get the attention of the official. A typically complete game for Brandon Knight today. 15 points. He averages 2.4 steals per game. He's got six steals and nine assists today. And there are the folks you know so well. Well, Mel, Mel just watches the game. I mean, he's, I think he might be listening to local radio. Either that or uh, calling Brevin. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Let them know. There's Brenda and uh, here's John Alexander, a longtime Seton Hall employees as well, and they get the open look. 
one of the few opportunities, huh? Deep for Ricardo. Ricardo's got the three pointer. 240 to go. And a 10 point game. Here's Knight picked up by Alexander. They try the trap. Nice step through. Jerron Brown gets it back to Troutman now. Don't you love the moxie of this team? Yeah, I do. I mean, how many Dickman's guys just will not stop? A little wrinkle there with the trap, try and shake up a team that really milks the clock. Back it goes. Knight kicks it out in the corner. Page back to Knight. Jumper. No. Put back. Yes. And a foul. Donata Zabotskis will shoot one more. He's had three follows that were very important for this team. And that time, they shot with three seconds on the clock. And he was able to convert. I mean, this is just soft enough to be tippable. And Zavakis gets himself right in position, no over the top. And the big fella able to finish it. You know, a cute little story I read today about him. His mom, he came home from playing soccer. Mm -hmm. And he was, clothes were filthy. His mother said, you've got to get an indoor sport. I'm not cleaning your clothes every day. Well, he's cleaning up the glass right now. <laughs> That was back home in Lithuania. Here's Ontario Lett back on for Chevy Troutman. Number two, 209 to go. And the Panthers will advance, barring something extraordinary here in the final two minutes. And there's that diagonal screen and a double on the baseline. Ricardo Scott, the sophomore. The tip is good. Rich Pittman puts it in. Freshman from Braintree, Mass. Good job getting the weak side. They extend the floor now. See if they can get a trap and a rotation. Page, you don't need it. Not a good one. Got to nope. use judgment. Here's Alexander. Three on two. Kicks it. The penetration up. No. Central Connecticut State's ball. Now that's a coach's delight, what Page did. Not now. But in the tape room. Let's, but see. Being, <laughs> let's see that again. What are you thinking about here? <laughs> Julius, <laughs> express yourself. A teaching tool. Exactly. <laughs> 120 to go. Battles has a fine game. Ball loose. Ontario left tracks it down. Here's Brown. See if he brings it back outside. No, Knight. Luck <laughs> selection, huh? Goes to the left hand away from traffic. Ben's looking down at the bench now. A little smile for his staff, Jamie Dixon, Barry Rorson, a pal of ours out of New York, Ernie Ziegler. What a year they've had. 65-52. 19 game win streak for the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut State will come to an end. This will be their first loss since December 30th. Here's Paige oh, oh, oh. with the exclamation point. Well, he went over Bunce Bunce last year and brought the house down. A little tomahawk for you, Vern. Oh! What a way to complete it. A defensive stop. And now they got an offensive foul on Edwards. How about this one, Vern? In your dreams, huh? <laughs> A slingshot. Send it in. Little guy. Oh, he is explosive. And Zavatskis goes to the line to compliment the effort of Julius Page. 67-52. Central Connecticut State's second trip to the NCAAs in the last three years. Their season will end 27-5. Pitt goes on. Howie Dickenman. Now you mentioned the record of Howie Dickerman and his club. Uh, the guy can coach. I mean, he prepared his team. They came out of the gate. Solid job. Brandon Knight gets the rest for the final 26.7 seconds. I think you're right. I think Mel is talking to Brevin. Not <laughs> in Memphis or if they're on the road. <laughs> oh, he just has become such a formidable guy on the defensive end. And Running the show for Ben Hallam. What an extension to have. He's the band leader, the choreographer. Whatever you need. Zavatskis at the line. 
He's going to get a rest. McCarroll comes on. Chad Johnson is on the floor as well. And the margin right now is 17. Nice to see a smile on <laughs> Savatskis. Uh, early in the game, he was in quite himself. Robert Barrett. Jason Smith getting a chance on the floor now for. Here's Demetrius. Final 20 seconds. Chad Johnson. Page. Demetrius. You know it's going up. Oh, yeah. I only got one time to shine. I'm going to drill it. Yuri Demetrius, the freshman. The final punctuation point. Very closely played game for the first 30 of the 40 minutes. This uh, gritty Central Connecticut State team got back within three. But then the Pitt Panthers went on an eight nothing run and controlled the final eight minutes of the ball game. Pitt advances. They'll take on the winner of California Penn. That game coming up in about 30 minutes here. The third seeded Panthers go to the second round. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Corsley Edwards from Central Connecticut State in his final game, and Brandon Knight from Pittsburgh, 17 points officially, five steals, and nine assists. 71-54, the final here in Pittsburgh. We're gonna take you back to our New York studios, and here's Greg Gumbel. All right, Vern, thanks very much. So the Pitt Panthers move on. The Central Connecticut State Blue Devils go home. We're going to take you now to Washington, D.C., where Michigan State is making a valiant effort to catch up with the Wolfpack before time runs out to the MCI Center. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. The Wolfpack with the lead of seven and possession. Now you got a foul, and of course, they picked out the man they want to foul. As they go to Hodge, they don't want the ball in Miller's hands whatsoever. Going to that foul line, you can see you have the coaches both in the mind game right now. Sendak is going to take Miller out, Crawford in. Defense, offense, knowing the game is going to be stopped quite a bit the rest of the way. So you don't put Miller on the line because he's 86%. Absolutely. But you put this guy on the line who's 74%. Well, and he's having a big day as well. Hodge, freshman, Harlem, New York. I think Hodge has been the key for NC State. When his energy took over the game offensively, Grundy going down with the four fouls early in the second half. Crawford comes back in. They're changing at each end with Miller and Crawford. Ballinger back in here. Now remember, you've got Hill, Taylor, and Ballinger. All of them are good three-point shooters. Don't be surprised to see Ballinger get an open look here. Corbett with the wing to Hill. Had a big day for the Spartans. Taylor looking for a room. Hill lost it going up. Taylor's open. Feeder set. Kept alive by Torbett, but cleared away by Clifford. There was a foul by Epperhoff on that where he pushed Torbett right underneath the basket. Not called. Would have been a huge play for Michigan State. Couldn't get a better look than the one Marcus Taylor no, had right there. But you know sometimes, Jim, when you're not expecting, you notice he did not square up with his feet whatsoever on that shot. It was kind of off balance when he went up. Maybe because he wasn't expecting the pass. Crawford just a 65% free throw shooter. One of the lower guys on the team that get a chance to play a lot. Reason he's on that line, obviously Miller they couldn't get him in for a substitution. We're looking at just one today from the field, Billy. I don't think that Taylor, and, and this comes with experience, understood how the game was being officiated. Ten point margin, final minute. Tail of two halves. Tough Taylor. Shot. And Grundy fighting for it. May have been fouled by Torbett. Yep. It's quite a comeback for an NC State team that in this first half had nothing to offer offensively. Was playing in front of a crowd that was very quiet. Most people kind of just having breakfast coming in here. But did a terrific job in the second half despite the fact that the man on this line who was their key player had to sit down many minutes 
with the four fouls. Brundy. Long way from a team that a year ago at this time was going nowhere in postseason. So NC State's advantage over Michigan State is now 11. It's in the half and to double the score on Michigan State in that time, 28-14. Brundy, a senior, having to sit out. Bulk of the work being then Just taken the care of by the freshman. That's a big, big thing to happen for this program. It's just the opposite of what happened in the first half, Jim. Remember, they were just down two. Grundy went out, and Michigan State was able to take that 12-2 run. Timeout, Michigan State. NC State in the field for the first time since 1991. Won one game that year, beat Southern Mississippi first round before getting knocked out by Oak State. But they're on their way today. Over just who picked up the foul and also uh, I think there's a water problem yeah. Tim somebody needed their bathing suit on over there I think much much of the water got spilled on the, uh, yeah. the official score and the uh, timekeeper yeah when Brett Nelson went for the steal he went right into the uh, alternate official Mike Woods monitor knocking over some debris and some software some computer software deflection and Nelson great hustle puts it back and watch Haslam hit first <laughs> Foul wipes out the legs of the Creighton player. No reason for timing to be an issue there. I think they're saying that uh, maybe 201 should be remaining, though, so the game clock itself will be changed. Obviously, it's uh, in error now. I don't recall a college basketball game with 20 minutes and 10 seconds left. <laughs> taking a three. There's just no room out there, but fouled in the act. Taylor to the line for three. Eftimoff. It is amazing to me how young players don't recognize how a game is being officiated. If you're Eftimoff, any time a man defensively has put a hand anywhere near an offensive player, it's been a foul. So why, with a nice lead and you want to keep the clock running, take the chance that a man taking a desperation three is not going to make it. I'm out instead of taking a chance on turning the ball over here. You know Creighton's going to, you know, Tim, excuse me, Creighton's going to be pressing. If there's any trap, any emergency situation, Florida has saved their timeouts. They need to use them if they have to. The Anthony Bowden out of Hammond, uh, Indiana. Transferred from Jacksonville, Texas College. Uh, Hammond is nearby Gary, Indiana. Only, uh, Stone's throw from Chicago. He's got a lot of fans and family here. 69-63. High pick from Haslam. Bowden runs right through it. No problem. Short on that one a bit. Nice defensive sequence as Grimes blocks out for the rebound. Bowden to an open Taylor. He wants it. He feels it. He is TNT igniting this Creighton team. 17 for Taylor in the second half. Florida's going to wind up with two possessions to one if everything stays the same with the clock the way it is. Aslam over Corver. Oh, Grimes lost the rebound. All right, he'll play that one over in his mind overnight if the score remains the same. The penetration, the kick to a wide open Taylor. Switch from three. And I don't see any blood out there yet, but maybe if there is, obviously Grundy would have to go out, and that means that Herb Sendak could pick anybody he wants to to be the free throw shooter for him. Is it going to be Scooter Cheryl will take the free throw shot? Yep. Scooter Cheryl will go to the line for the two. 82%. Grundy 75, so a pretty good switch. And they get some ice on that forehead. Hodge out here smiling to F them off. Hodge really set things on fire for this NC State team in the second half.
Well, Jim, before this game started, we knew that either one of these teams, if every, being so young, if something could break for them, either one could come out victorious. Uh, it was so close a matchup. I think they could play 10 times and be about five to five. Exactly. Pretty even. Yep. And uh, they each owned a half here today with a larger piece of the halftime one half battle goes to NC State. Just dominating round two of this game. Down 30 to 18 after 20 minutes. They put 51 on the board in the second half. Unbelievable when they couldn't get into double figures in the first 10 minutes of the first half. NC State advances to the second round and will take on the winner Sunday of this next game, UConn and Hampton. Yes, a 51 to 28 second half advantage for the young North Carolina State Wolfpack team. Chevrolet players of the game, Chris Hill and Julius Hodge. NC State advances here in Washington. Let's go back to Greg in New York. All right, Jim, thank you. So Michigan State is gone. North Carolina State advances. And meanwhile, Creighton and Florida are down to 31 seconds, 69 apiece. We'll take you there after this. First turnover. So you talk about a young man, and all of a sudden you jinx him. Well, a terrific game, though, for Quantas White running this Oklahoma offense. And a timeout with 41 seconds remaining. Oklahoma in control. The sixth man of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference, Terry Taylor, no points in the first half, 20 in the second, six from downtown to tie the Florida Gators at 69. Wow, what a play, and in my opinion, Florida should have switched that ball screen to get more pressure on Taylor's three-point shot. Tim Florida's gonna play for the last shot of the game. They've got overtime at worst. What they want to do here is to get a good shot up with three seconds on the clock. If they miss it, they got a chance to offensive rebound once, offensive rebound twice, and win the game in regulation. Most of these games are won on follow shots, offensive rebounds, not the initial shot with three seconds to go. Creighton on a 10-2 run, just after a six-minute drought from the floor. Hamilton had that five-second call earlier, and Taylor picks him up with extended defense. I'm looking for the high post pick and roll with Bonner out high. Hamilton's going to use the pick and roll to try to create off the dribble, penetrate pitch, pound it inside to Haslam or offensive rebound. Hey, remember Butler with Mike Miller? Similar on the run to a final four against Michigan State in the championship. Could we see a reenactment? Nelson in the role of Miller. Not this time. Loose ball. We're headed to overtime. Right. So what did you think of this? Nelson trying to draw the foul, drive it to the basket. However, Creighton did a very good job keeping Florida out of what they wanted to do down the stretch of this game. Billy Donovan got what he wanted, and that was two for one. What he didn't want was a five-second call that would lead to a three. Shot, the bounce. Turned it around and enabled his team, Craig, to put this game in overtime. 69-62 with two minutes left, a seven-point run to close it out. Foul. And gave them spectacular offensive moves and board work in the first half. And Lots of finishes in the second half as well. Well above his average today. You look at Aaron Carr. First point of the game. And time to announce the Chevrolet most viable players of the game. And from Illinois, Chicago, Martel Bailey, 11 and 5. Aaron McKee from Oklahoma, 26 points in this game. And just an absolute man on the on the boards. Well, you said it right. He was a man on the boards, and his offensive prowess really rearing its head today. When he first came to Oklahoma, I think he was all offense and didn't give much thought to defense. But under the tutelage of that man, his defense has gotten better and better and better. And that's part of the reason that Oklahoma is a number two seed and arguably 
a number one seed in many people's minds. White. This is the first. You know, Oklahoma on the season, Bob, unbeaten at the Lloyd Noble Center. 16-0. They were 4-0 at neutral sites. They beat Kansas at Kemper Arena, which really was a home game for KU in Kansas City. There are four losses at Michigan State, at Kansas in the regular season, at Texas Tech against Bob Knight, and then at Oklahoma State. They have not lost since that game on February 13th. This is going to be nine in a row. Yeah, and, and it's going to be 13 of 14 also. So they are hot at the right time. Final seconds ticking down in Dallas at the buzzer. And Cardos banks it off the iron. Oklahoma advances 71-63 over Illinois Chicago. And coming up next, it will be Xavier and Hawaii. Seven against the number 10 seed. 71-63, Oklahoma now 28-4 on the season. Let's go to New York, and here's Ray Gumbel. All right, Craig, thanks very much. So Oklahoma moves on. They play the winner of Hawaii Xavier, as Craig Bowlerjack mentioned. But take a look at what's happening at the United Center in Chicago. Creighton and Florida are in overtime. Let's join that live. Tim Brando and Eddie Fogler. A player control foul against Justin Hamilton turns the ball back over to the Blue Jays. In overtime, they lead it by two. They went on a 7-0 run in the last two minutes to force overtime. Terry Taylor hitting a big three. And then Florida had a chance to win it, but Brett Nelson's runner was short. And that's a player control foul against Corver. Excellent work on the low block by Haslam with four. And last time Haslam was afraid to play defense. Tim and gave up an easy basket. This time he had to step out and take the charge, or it was another easy two for Craig. Nice play by Udonis Haslam. The game summary really illustrates the, how this uh, ebb and flow has been affected by runs. Both teams have been able to take the other out of what they want. Nelson really struggling with his shot. Corver keeps it alive. Now Ismail Carroll with numbers. Inside the foul. Orion Green against Grimes. Well, Creighton beating the Gators at their own game. Excellent transition play. Moved the ball up the court. Pitched it ahead. Made a nice play. Watch. Carroll pushing the ball up the court. Team speed here, very important. Nice pass, dumps it inside to Grimes. He gets fouled and gets to the line for two. One of the storylines coming into this game was the injury to Brett Nelson. I don't believe the ill effects of the fractured cheek have had anything to do with his shot being off, but he has missed 15 shots from the floor. He's four out of 19. He was the go-to guy at the end of regulation. Now all of the momentum with the team from Omaha. 73-69 with 318 remaining. Florida needs to have some poise and patience to get the shot it wants. It needs to pound this ball inside to Haslam. Haslam in traffic. And uh, Dabbert getting some help with Grimes on the low block. Foul will go against Dabbert. The Florida Gators have had so many close games. The SEC from the bottom up, the toughest conference in the RPI would illustrate that. Those are last possession games, four of those. It's an incredible thing to consider. If you would lose that many games, we were there for one of them against Alabama. And a team that generally in the past has won those close ball games at the end. You see the difference in Haslam in the second half, but he has struggled at the line. He's five for ten at the free throw line. It appeared as if prior to that late run when Taylor got hot, that Florida had control of this game when Haslam came back on the floor and when Darren fouled out. But Creighton had just enough deflections, just enough turnovers to get Taylor three-point tries. And interestingly enough, Florida has gone big now with Bonner, Lee, and Haslam in the game. And his uh, problems at the line continue. 73-70 with under three minutes left. Ismail Carroll. And that big lineup was put in to play a 2-3 zone. And David Lee's been very effective, the freshman coming in. There's Taylor.